Hello and welcome to another History of Vision video. My name is Barbara and in this video I'll go over a timeline of all the major events that happened in history from the end of the First World War in 1918 all the way through to the Second World War and the end of the Second World War in 1945 as well as the start of the Cold War and we shall end off in 1955 for this particular timeline. Now, this is a video with mainly key dates and key events to memorise. To go into more depth on a specific event or topic, do check out our channel where we have all of these other major events explained in separate videos and do watch those in-depth summaries so that you can get an in-depth idea. However, this is just a quick revision summary, so let's get started. Now, our timeline begins in 1918. This was the end of the First World War where the big three met. This was Lloyd George of the UK, President Wilson of the US and Georges Clemenceau of France. This meeting was in order to sign a series of peace treaties in order to negotiate what the terms of peace would be following the First World War. This of course resulted in the infamous Versailles Treaty, which essentially was signed without Germany being present, and Germany was obligated not only to pay billions of gold marks, in other words 132 billion gold marks, it also had to reduce its army to just 100,000 men and Germany was broken up and it was essentially split into certain areas which formed new states including Poland, Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania. The country itself wasn't completely broken up, it still retained its major territories, however it did have to give up other territories. Of course other treaties included the Saint-Germain Treaty, this impacted Austria and Hungary because prior to this treaty it was the Austria-Hungary Empire, however this empire was dismantled and countries that were formed as a result of this treaty were Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia and Romania. The newly treaty impacted Bulgaria which lost land and Yugoslavia gained land because of this but also the formation of Romania and Greece and of course in Germany there was the Spartacist putsch by the left-wing communists. Now, in 1920, the new German government faced even more challenges. They had a right-wing cap putsch, so of course, as I've mentioned, the Spartacist Pist was on the left wing, putsch meaning the revolt. However, the cap putsch was led by the right wing by a man called Wolfgang Cap, who was unhappy by the current government, the SPD government, and he wanted to overthrow it. However, of course, both putsches were not successful and the SPD managed to survive. There were also a series of other treaties, other peace treaties, which were signed. Now, the Trinan Treaty affected Hungary, which of course was the other half of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Trianon Treaty obviously laid, led it to lose more land. However, in 1920 as well, there was the Treaty of Sever, which essentially was imposed upon the Ottoman Empire. It lost land and this led to the formation of Kurdistan, Armenia, Hejaz, and Iraq and Palestine became British Mandate territories and Syria became a French Mandate territory. And of course, in 1920 as well, the League of Nations was set up. In 1921, there was the Ireland Island dispute, which was essentially the first dispute that was successfully resolved by the League of Nations. This was a dispute over a series of islands which bordered and which were quite close to Finland, but also Sweden. Now, in 1923, a series of other events happened. Firstly, starting with a final peace treaty. This was the Lausanne Treaty. This essentially was after the Ottoman Empire faced a revolt internally and the new Turkish government needed to, re to sign another new treaty. There was also the Corfu crisis. Essentially, this is when Mussolini, the leader of Italy, invaded and forced Greece to pay after one of the Italian generals was shot and killed. This wasn't Greece's fault. However, this was actually one of the failings, one of the early failings of the League of Nations because there were unable to get Italy to agree to leave peacefully and Italy additionally imposed Greece uh, payments in order to leave. Also during this year, this was a really, really challenging year for Germany. They faced hyperinflation. This is when the German currency, the mark, lost its value, as you can see in this image. Children were even playing with it. And because Germany was unable to keep up with its reparations, France invaded the Ruhr, the really rich industrial area in Germany. 
1924, however, Gustav Stresemann was able to rescue Germany economically. He negotiated the Doors Plan with the USA, where he was able to release and secure five billion US dollars to help it in its reparation payments. Of course, there was then in 1925, the Locarno Pact. And then in 1926, Germany was invited to join the League of Nations. And another win for the League during this year was 200,000 slaves were freed by the League. Now, in 1928, there was the Kellogg-Briand Pact. This was essentially another pact between Germany, France, and the US in order to secure peace. In 1929, however, there were two major events. The first, which was not as major, was the Young Plan, which was an agreement between Germany and the US to reduce reparations to 37 billion marks under the Treaty of Versailles. However, this all went out the window as a result of the Wall Street economic crash in the US, which had a global negative impact impact all the money that the US had promised Germany it could no longer pay it and Germany of course also went into depression then in 1931 there was the Manchurian crisis this was also known as the Mukden incident essentially Jap Japan used an explosion on a railway in Manchuria as an excuse to invade Manchuria in China now China turned to the league both uh, Japan and China were part of the league as members they turned to the league asked for help Japan refused to listen to the leak once a Litton report was produced in 1932, but also on the leak side, they took way too long to send an envoy to Manchuria to make this report and ultimately Japan rebelled and left the leak. Now, in 1932, there was the World Disarmament Conference. This was a conference that was held to try and secure world peace. However, in 1933, by this stage, Hitler had been made Chancellor in Germany and he decided to leave the League. And he also had used the Reichstag fire as a pretext to essentially becoming powerful. Now, in 1934, Hitler secured his hold further in Germany. He became Führer. He essentially outlawed all other political parties and Germany became a one-party state. In addition, he managed to eliminate threats within the Nazi party, and this was known as the Night of the Long Knives. Key m Nazi leaders such as Ernst Röhm were killed. Now, 1935, there was the Abyssinian crisis. This involved the Italian leader Mussolini, who essentially decided to invade Abyssinia. This is an area in a region that is now known as Ethiopia, and this is as a result of skirmishes and fighting between the Italian soldiers and the Abyssinian soldiers. This was used as a pretext for invasion. Now, Abyssinia and Emperor Haile Selassie, who was the leader of Abyssinia, turned to the League, asked for help. The League essentially responded by imposing weapon sanctions on both Abyssinia and Italy. This actually did more to harm Abyssinia and ultimately uh, Italy overcame them. Also, during the same time during this crisis, there was the Hall of Al Pact. This was essentially a pact that was secretly drawn up between the UK Foreign Secretary Samuel Hall and the French Premier Pierre Laval. This was sent secretly to Mussolini, basically telling him, look, if you can try and resolve this Abyssinian crisis by taking two thirds of the best of Abyssinian land and letting Emperor Haile Selassie keep one third of the worst land, we'll be fine with it. However, this was leaked. Mussolini had ignored this and this caused a major uproar. Also, during 1935, on Germany's side, Hitler secretly started rearming Germany, essentially breaking the Treaty of Versailles agreements and also the Saar a region was returned to Germany. And in 1936, a Spanish civil war broke out with General Franco going against the government and Hitler used this as a really convenient excuse to test bombs that he was planning and who would later use in the Blitz and he bombed Guernica, which is a city in Spain and it was heavily bombed and there were a lot of war crimes which were occurred as a result of this. Now, in 1938, three major events happened. Firstly, there was Anschluss. This is essentially a political union that happened between Germany and Austria. And of course, this violated the Treaty of Versailles, whereby Germany and Austria were forbidden to have any kind of political unity. However, Germany had occupied Austria and a referendum was voted, whereby 99% of Austrians voted to unify with Germany. Also, Sudetenland, a part in Czechoslovakia, which had 
close to 3 million German speakers was invaded by Germany. Now, this led to a crisis and Neville Chamberlain and Hitler ultimately signed the Munich Agreement where Chamberlain agreed under his policy of appeasement to let Hitler stay in, Ch in Czechoslovakia and Sudetenland. In exchange, Hitler promised that he would not invade any more countries. Also in Germany, the Night of the Broken Glass happened. This is when the Nazi party encouraged Germans to go out, burn synagogues, destroy Jewish businesses in order to damage Jewish livelihood. Now, of course, what then happened that led to the Second World War in 1939, this is when the Second World War began, was when Hitler decided to violate the Munich Agreement and he invaded Poland. And of course, this led to the onset of the Second World War. Now, 1941, during the World War, this major and very shameful historical event happened. This was when the Holocaust started. This was seen as the final solution by the Nazis in Germany and, of course, across all the states and territories that it had invaded. All, essentially, the prisoners, including and especially the Jewish prisoners, were exterminated. And this led to over six million Jewish people dying in concentration camps. In 1945, the Second World War ended, Germany was defeated and of course the Holocaust ended and the Jewish were rescued, including other political prisoners and other prisoners of other minorities. This also led to the meeting of the big three during this time. This was the UK led by Winston Churchill, the USA led by President Roosevelt and of course the USSR which was led by Stalin. So they met at key conferences including Yalta and Potsdam. This was during 1945 and essentially some of the major decisions that were made were firstly all countries and territories which were freed from German rule uh, as a result of the Second World War would be entitled to elections. However, Germany did not have any leadership, so Germany would be divided into four zones and Berlin would also be divided into four zones, each of which would go to either France, UK, US or the USSR. However, also during this time, obviously the USSR had helped liberate lots of countries in the East. However, the USSR decided to stay in the East and this was seen, especially by America, as an Eastern expansion. Now, in 1946, the, by this stage, it became clear that Stalin wouldn't honour the agreements made at Yalta and Potsdam, that the USSR would essentially let free and fair elections happen in the countries it occupied. So Winston Churchill made what was seen as a rousing speech. This was called the Iron Curtain speech, where he basically accused Stalin of drawing a division between Eastern and Western Europe, essentially what he called as a metaphor, the Iron Curtain. Now, in 1947, the Marshall Plan was established in order to help all the war-torn Western European countries rebuild and $17 billion of aid was set up in order to prevent what President Truman and his policy called the domino effect, this idea that poor Western European countries would fall to the influence of communism. Of course, Stalin took umbrage to this. He wasn't very happy. So he set a similar equivalent called common form as a uh, rival to the Marshall Plan. Now, in 1948, there was a Berlin blockade. Essentially, Stalin was really angry. Western Berlin looked far nicer than Eastern Berlin because it received billions in aid, but also Western Germany started really looking quite shameful next to Eastern Germany. Hence, what Stalin decided to do was to starve Western Berlin and have his own way of making the Americans look terrible, but ultimately to try and force them out of Western Berlin. Now, what happened is that this was essentially what we would call the Cold War period. Now, to prevent a war, what America did in order to prevent outright conflict between USA and USSR in Berlin was it airlifted up to 200,000 times and it airlifted food and important essential supplies into Berlin during this blockade. And of course, this blockade was lifted in 1949. Also in 1949, NATO was set up. This was a military alliance between majority Western states, including USA, and of course USA was seen as heading up. Also Comic-Con on the USSR side was set up, but the essential rival to NATO was the Warsaw Pact, which was established in 1955 by Stalin. And essentially 
by the time the Second World War had ended and essentially 1946 to 1945. This was when the set of the Cold War began. And essentially at this point, tensions between the USA and the USSR was reaching a really high peak. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do subscribe to our channel and give it a thumbs up. But also, don't forget that you can visit our website www.firstratetutors.com. There you will find plenty of essay plans, revision materials, and essential material related to history, including the Cold War, including Hitler, and all the different areas that we have covered. All of this material is essential in terms of passing your exams. So do make sure you visit our website to find out more about this material. And also do let us know if you'd like to see a specific video, what content you would like to see it in. Thank you so much for listening.